Hi there, I'm here to talk to you today about what is Open Feature. Open Feature is a project that has come into the CNCF sandbox this year. It is something that I've been involved with with a bunch of other folks and we're really excited to start to see how people are going to use it in the near future. Open Feature is effectively the democratization of feature flags. Feature flags are things that typically would be used in the web browser for A-B testing, um, for canary testing, and a lot of us would associate it with our JavaScript library doing a, an external call out somewhere and checking to see if some value uh, was set and what was it set to. And that would be something you could change in that vendor's UI by doing a toggle on or off. So that really is what a feature is, a feature flag is at the most basic level. Of course, there's a lot more to it, like evaluation, dynamic rules, all sorts of contextual aware stuff. So if I've got a microservice or a web app, um, I can look to see if the data or the JSON block, for example, that's passing through has email addresses, in which case the feature might switch to an on or an off. Um, a good example of this might also be like geolocation. Is the web browser making a request to our server from a certain location, in which case we should serve back certain data as part of our, um, our feature set? Uh, which we have defined in the flag spec. So vendor neutrality is a big part of this. You know, vendors have come together here and said, hey, we want to make some something good for the community. I think that this is something that was inspired by the open telemetry movement um, a, a year or two ago, and, you know, prior to that, open census, etc. And this is exciting because it's going to breed extensibility, right? So you can do feature flags that are vendor agnostic. You can take your feature flag spec with you to another vendor, which is really, really cool. It also means that we're trying to build a community and educate people around the usage of this. And so Open Feature as a project has a lot of applications, but really it will only thrive, and the litmus test for this is by adoption. So I'm just going to show you the website that we launched uh, pretty recently. It just, you know, it remarks on the things I just mentioned. Uh, and as a project, Open Feature is very exciting because to me, the new ground that hasn't been covered is how do you take feature flagging beyond just web testing in the web browser? Well, it is possible now to have feature flags inside infrastructure. So within our Kubernetes layer, we can have feature flags. And this is where I get more involved. So I was the, the author of FlagD and Open Feature Operator. And I managed to get some great collaborators who have helped enrich the project beyond its humble origins. But what was really interesting to me right from the outset was how do we take a feature flag and make it turn on and off in Kubernetes, but the user can still use their existing feature flag provider. And so we thought about this, we have had some great discourse in our community, and we've come up with some pretty interesting answers to that question. And so I'm gonna take you through a project, uh, as I said, I authored earlier on called Flag D and uh, Open Feature Operator. And the community and the folks and the collaborators who've helped to make this really great uh, are continuing to do so. And so I'm excited to see how you like it and what you take this forward with. So this is Open Feature, this is the project. What does it all center around? Well, Open Feature really centers around the specification for Open Feature. So let's just take a look at that specification. It's on GitHub under the Open Feature org. The spec document is effectively a contract of what components will be inside of a JSON structure, perhaps even a YAML structure and how these things will be implemented. So to give you an example, I mentioned a little earlier this idea of evaluation. We define what an evaluation context here is, what sort of things must be uh, supported, so Boolean, string, etc. And this looks similar to something you might see in an, in an ISO standard. So it's starting to create a consistent um, way of thinking about delivering a, a payload of feature flags. Now, this looks um, a little bit abstract. So what I'm going to do is to show you an implementation of this. So I'm going to just come across onto my left screen here and show you a sample of some feature flags. Now, I'll just zoom in a little bit because sometimes I think it can be kind of tough to see on these videos what this stuff is like. But let's take the simplest example. My Boolean flag right at the top, is the flag enabled? Yes. What are the variants of the flag on and off? Is the what's the default variant? It's on. So therefore, the result of querying my Boolean flag is true. This is the most basic flagging behavior. We can also add things such as operands. And we can also add some uh, JSON um, super, superstructure in terms of um, operators around the JSON so that you can have JSON net-like queries and we can have evaluation. So here in 
is color yellow, you can do a particular targeting operation, which uses an is equal to operate, uh, operand, and it says if the var color is yellow, and in which case it goes from on or off. So you can see already that feature flags can be quite complex. You know, this is a, a very, very simple file, but as you start to build your business logic on it, this will grow bigger and bigger and bigger, and you'll start to have much more complicated behaviors, such as, um, you know, as I said, ge uh, geolocation. You might have um, some hallmarks from the user agent being compared here as well, or other data within the payload. So it's extremely powerful what you can do with feature flagging, and we are trying to consolidate this into a specification that can be reused across vendors, but also is driving forward progress at the same time. I think what's worth doing now is to show you how FlagD starts to work as a standalone program. FlagD was created with the idea that it could be run as a simple Golang binary across any architecture um, that we support, you know, in, in the more or less modern community. I'm so talking for everything from like Power9 to ARM7, ARM HF. Um, to AMD 64 and everything that you see more in desktop computing. The reason that's important is because this should be able to run on Edge. This should be able to run on IoT devices as well, because these are decisions that you can make um, and pre-bake the logic into the feature flag set so that you can start to have reactive programming based on uh, conditional input. So my initial incarnation of this was in a research document, um, and the commit first opened, I think, in May this year was around how would we build this and the idea is that we have sync interfaces and service interfaces a service is something that will present flag d and the uh, the feature flags to the outside world so currently we're using grpc and http for that we're also building a socket ipc interface and we also have then the sync interfaces where where it, where it pulls its flags from so that could be a file it could be an http endpoint it could be a cloud provider's remote API. So instantly, you're running this binary on your local computer, you can connect to your remote cloud provider's API and turn things on and off at your local computer from that provider, which sounds a bit crazy. So let me show you it. So I'm just gonna run it locally. Um, this is running on Golang 1.18.3, I believe. So all I need to provide it is the path for the feature flag set. Um, I'm on, a, uh, I'm on a wrong version of Golang, so let me just sort that out. Okay. And now what we should see is that the program starts running. So you can see that it says the default is to use the HTTP service provider and the file path sync provider. So it's read that this is a local file path. But as I said, it supports URI um, as well as some other API uh, remote endpoints. So now this is sat here waiting for interaction. It polls and checks periodically that the flags implementation uh, hasn't been updated. And if it has, it will differentiate that and update. We've also then got something called an evaluation engine in that. The evaluation engine does some of that more advanced logic I was showing you momentarily. So let's pick something out. So if I curl on my local host, my number flag resolve the value of the number. So let's just type this in. And you can see it comes back with value two. So my number flag resolve number. So if I want to change this, let's say I go to the config uh, samples. So my number flag, which is here, let's change this variant to one. What you'll see in this third tab here is that there's a new configuration update. And you'll see that that's now changed to one. So you can imagine if I was on, on my, uh, my vendor app in the cloud, I could turn these feature flags on and off with toggles. And with flag D, it means that I don't need to do that in a web framework, in, in JS, in Node.js, or some other um, language typically associated with, with web browsers. What I could do is I could run this on machinery. So this was step one. Flag D basically gets us a binary that can inter integrate and be pulled and polled um, by either a local process or perhaps even a container. And so this is where combining flag D together with something called the open feature operator now gives us the ability to run this in Kubernetes. I'm gonna go through the architecture of this and I've blown this up so you can see how this works. Effectively, when you want to run a feature flag or create something in a Kate's cluster, you deploy the open feature operator 
and then you create a custom resource with your flags, a bit like that JSON file I was showing you, it's associated to a deployment. What the Open Feature Operator does is it injects a sidecar that serves flag D inside of that deployment and does dynamic reloading of the configuration. There's a bunch more stuff that happens there, right? So we're dealing with upgrades, we're dealing with config map refreshes, um, as well as making sure that the admission of these flags is valid. So with that said, on the left of my screen right here, you can see a couple of things have been deployed. At the bottom, I have the open feature controller manager. Well, to get that, you just go to the website and download these two things. One is the certificate to run the webhooks, and the other one is the release. You can see that you need to have Cert Manager installed at the moment. So the controller manager is running, and it's sat there quite happily. If you want to play with an example, the next thing you have to do is to check out the Open Feature Operator Git repository. So I'm going to go into that. And then at the bottom, you'll see we give you a little example of how to get up and running. So I apply the config samples. I already have them in my cluster, but you can see what that's doing is it's creating this end-to-end -end feature flag configuration. It's creating deployment and it's creating a service. So let's have a quick look on what's really going on here. Well, first, first things first, my deployment is in my default namespace here, open feature demo deployment. What's interesting is you'll see that it has an annotation for the feature flag configuration. So it can be a many to one where you can have many deployments consuming the same feature flag configuration. And this is really important because in a production environment, you may well have a single feature flag configuration per namespace and the namespaces might be the isolation boundaries of a team. So if we go back from that. Let's look at the actual feature flag configuration. You'll see here we have a custom resource let me just blow this screen up a little bit so you can see it a bit better. And if we go into this, we have the feature flag spec, which looks very, very similar to what we were showing you earlier on. The difference here is that there's a bit more metadata captured around it. We also can modify this spec and it will update all of those deployments. So if I switch a flag from on to off or change the default variant, that will be reflected in all of those deployments. If you're still trying to get your head around this and it still seems a bit abstract and how this applies to Kubernetes, well, let's go ahead and actually look at the service that we're providing. So let's go to the demo service and we're going to port forward that. And what you can see here is our demo application for Open Feature. You can take yourself through this demo at any time. What I want to show you though is how this demo pod lets you play around with Fibonacci functions, but you can control simple things in this by actually going into the feature flag configuration and changing it. And so what we anticipate happening is that you can either in flag D link straight to the provider, or if you're using the Kate's native provider, you can control this through your own operators, through your own APIs, and you can turn things on and off. So let's change the welcome message to off. Let's change the default uh, color to blue. I'll save that out. And uh, we'll run run some tests. Uh, let's say turn this down to say da -da, to there. Is it too quick? Let's turn it up something a bit more. There we go. And what will happen is on the next reconciliation of the operator, it will go through and look at the feature flag configuration and update it. Now, you'll notice the difference here between using a cloud native provider. It's not simultaneous. We didn't want to build a system that works against Kubernetes. Instead, we're using reconciliation. We're letting the API server and the operator work uh, together. We're also not forcing up updates um, from the config map in a very harsh way by actually going off and unmounting, remounting, or creating new config maps. You'll see it's upgraded uh, within about sort of 45 seconds. It is my feeling that working with the technology rather than against it is the key to success here. So within about 40 seconds or so, 10 seconds, depending on traffic, you'll get your feature um, flag updated. If that's not fast enough for you, as I said, you can use the flag D direct integration with the back end provider. Well, flag D will maintain a, a direct API connection. But what's really cool here is that now we see we have our Fibonacci as a service that has changed color, which is really, really fun. This is a simple application that's presenting a web app. Let's actually look at how this deployment's set up. 
So this is the demo deployment. You'll see that it has a sidecar that has been added to it. So you have the flag D container and you also have the configuration being provided to the flag D and you have the actual application itself running here, right? And the application is pinging on its local host using the RESTful interface to flag D. Flag D has an open API conformant specification, meaning you can reverse generate client libraries. So in this demo, there is a client library that's talking to flag D. Equally, we'll soon produce a demo for gRPC so that the feature flag demo could be used over gRPC, it could be used over IPC sockets. Why is this exciting? I get really excited talking to people about this. I mentioned flag D earlier and I said IPC sockets. Well, feature flags no longer have to just be Node.js. They no longer have to be um, web technologies in the browser. You can add feature flags to any programming language that can create an AF Unix socket now, right? So flag D could be running as a systemd service, consuming flags from a web provider or however you like, and your C process can now talk to over your slash uh, proc, have a, a mounted socket to consume feature flags. So for, as an example, I wrote a bash script that would run and check for flags and turn on and off kernel modules based on the flag D input. Now, am I saying that's a good idea for production in real life? Maybe not, but academically, the power this gives you is incredible. So I hope that this has given you a brief summary of what open feature is. I'm really excited because Flag D and the Open Feature Operator projects are starting to become pivotal in this whole experience. Of course, the client SDKs and the work that our vendor uh, contributors are doing is absolutely paramount. But what's exciting is this new space that I've not really seen explored before. So think about it. If you use Open Feature Operator and you have a load balancer and you want to use the sidecar for Flag D, you could have your Nginx module checking to see if in its pod if on a certain RESTful endpoint something's changed and to modify the Nginx config. So you could turn it on and off through a feature flag. I would love to know what sort of things you would be interested in using this for. Is it service mesh? Is it ingress? Is it something more? Uh, let me know. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, I will be speaking at KubeCon uh, Detroit in 2022, so this year, uh, and I will be talking all about open feature uh, at the conference. Thank you again. Bye-bye.